Welcome back. Hopefully by now you have your uh, atmospheric model completed and you have a relationship for your takeoff parameter uh, using whatever figure um, you choose. The Lofton report has the uh, figure for jet aircraft and the Raymer textbook uh, includes uh, these curves already for uh, several different classifications of aircraft. So whatever you choose, uh, that's completely fine. I think I can show the uh, Raymer plot here. I'll just add it so you can have reference so you can see um, here if I copy it in this is the figure from the Raymer textbook um, so you can see that it has the takeoff distance and takeoff parameter plotted for various kinds of aircraft we have the propeller aircraft jet aircraft and it separates out the ground roll and the uh, over 50 foot obstacle for each of those so depending on what your requirement is a ground roll requirement or a uh, takeoff field length over a 50 foot obstacle requirement it also shows the uh, balanced field length. The balanced field length would be um, the determination if you have one engine inoperable and you need to stop the aircraft. Essentially, uh, you do a balanced field length analysis to determine how much runway you would need uh, to be able to stop in time without running out of runway if you lose an engine and start braking right when you hit this critical speed V1. Um, so we're not covering that for our requirements for this project. Uh, so for now, we're just looking for either jet aircraft or propeller, depending on the RFP that you're choosing. So maybe I'll just leave that here. Um, somewhere out of the way. All right. So now we're into actually plotting our wing loading. So there's going to be a lot of plots that are down here. So I'm going to block off a large region. And I like to try to separate this. So I'll make this a different color. Let's choose uh, blue, and I'm just going to write plotting down here. And so I can see it. I'll make this white. I'll make it bold. Let's make the font a little bit bigger. So here we're going to do all of our plotting for our wing loading and our thrust to weight ratio relationships for our various uh, requirements. So I'll leave some space for all the titles and things like that. Um, the first column is just going to be our wing loading. So we're going to plot our, our uh, x-axis essentially. And I always like to include units everywhere just in case. So we have pounds per foot squared uh, in Excel. I have a shortcut set. So if I just uh, need to have a superscript, you can add these icons uh, just in your settings. So it's quick and easy just to create a superscript. Um, so I have my units, pounds per foot squared, I like this to be centered, and because it's a heading, I'm going to make it bold, and there's going to be a lot of headings along here, so let's also underline this so we can separate that from the table data. So let's just plot our wing loading, this is going to be our x-axis, uh, let's look at a bunch of values, and we can look at values all the way from 1, if I just start a few, uh, Excel will note a count, and Let's say we want to go up to a wing loading of, um, let's keep going. Let's do a wing loading. Maybe I don't need to go by every one. I can go by every two. So we have uh, 60 here. So if I just make that two, four, two, four, six, copy these, that should know to double it. So now we have a wing loading plot from 2 all the way up to 120. That should cover um, any range that we need. Most aircrafts fall within this category. Um, gliders tend to be around near this low wing loading area. They have the high glide ratio um, and low takeoff and landing speeds for safety because they're unpowered aircraft. Uh, and then you have the um, heavy transports might operate somewhere around here and everything else somewhere in between. So our first relationship we're going to look at is our stall. So the first one we might care about is our clean configuration. So I'm going to put stall and I'm going to put clean. So that means we have no flaps or anything like that. And I'm going to indicate that it's going to be at sea level. And so again, I'm just going to reiterate that this from our stall equation, this is actually going to be shot, uh, plotting our wing loading not our thrust to weight ratio, stall is just a function of our wing loading. Um, and that relationship, if we think back to our 
uh, notes in our equations for lift and drag. We have this relationship here. I'll copy it down so we can see it. In steady level flight, our lift uh, is equal to our weight and the lift equation, one half rho times our velocity squared times our wing area times our lift coefficient. Now in the stall condition, we can't generate any more lift. We're at the limit of the lift that we can generate for a given speed, and that speed is our stall speed. And then uh, our density rho is the density for whatever atmospheric condition we're at. So for sea level, um, we'd have sea level air density. And so our stall limit is sort of uh, based on this combination of wing area and our CL max. So for a clean wing, a typical airfoil or a typical wing might have a, a maximum lift coefficient of around 1.5 for a straight wing and as we add sweep uh, that will decrease. So we don't really know what that's going to be for now so we can estimate and I think on our plot over here I have an estimate value for a clean wing a CL max of 1. So we're going to use this relationship we rearrange and we get this uh, equation on the right hand side for our wing loading. Wing loading is equal to 1 half rho v stall squared times our max lift coefficient. So I'm just going to code this in. So our wing loading is equal to 0 0.5 times our density at sea level. So we have that up here. I'm just going to select our density at sea level. 0 0.002378 slugs per feet cubed. Uh, times our velocity squared. Now our velocity, our stall speed, um, I wrote the units here in knots to airspeed. For it to work in this equation with the correct units, we need to convert this to feet per second. So in order to get from knots to airspeed to feet per second, you just multiply by 1.688, just like we did in our atmospheric model. So right now I have our stall speed set to 90. Um, we can play around with this later and see how it affects our, uh, our wing loading. But I'm going to multiply by our stall speed times 1.688, and then that whole quantity is squared, so that 1.688 is inside the square, or inside the brackets, times the maximum lift coefficient that our wing can generate. So we don't, you know, have an exact number on this, we're approximating for now, um, so we'll say it's 1. So plug that in, and in this case we have a wing loading of 27.4. So I'm going to copy this all the way down so I can. it's easier to copy the uh, remaining equations. Um, so I'm going to make sure that these are constant so they're not selecting different values as I copy this down. And you'll notice it doesn't matter, again, what the x value is. We have the same constant. So when we plot this on a constraint analysis, it's just going to show up as a vertical line. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's create our first constraint analysis plot. Um, instead of selecting data points, I'm just going to insert a chart, and I want it to be a line graph. And it automatically selects data here for me. I don't want that data. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select the data from my chart. I'm going to add a new series. I want the x values to be our wing loading. So I'm just going to plot two points. It's just a straight line, so I just need to start an end point. So I'll select those two points from my x values. And for my y values, I'm just going to insert 0 and 1. So that will span a wing loading from 0, um, or thrust weight ratio, sorry, of 0 all the way to 1. Thrust weight ratio of 0 means it's the glider, it has no engines. And a thrust weight ratio of 1 means it has enough thrust to take off vertically, or at least hover, um, in theory, uh, because the thrust is equal to the weight. So if you imagine the free body diagram of that system, it could uh, essentially hover vertically, it has enough thrust. So any aircraft with a fixed wing is going to have a thrust to weight ratio less than that because the wing is used to generate some of the lift, so the thrust doesn't need to generate enough lift to overcome the weight. So this should uh, capture our entire range. And I'm going to name this, I'm going to call this stall clean. So that'll be our plot. Hit OK. And we have our straight line. So I'm going to get rid of this title. Because this title is just based on the name of the one series, we're going to add a lot to this. I'm going to call this constraint diagram for our constraint analysis. And when I add the legend later on, maybe I can add the legend now, make some space for it. Um, I'll add chart element. I'm going to add a legend. I'm going to put this to the right. And there we have our stall clean. So we have our first point on our constraint diagram. 
Next thing what I want to do is I want to look at stall if we have flaps. So how does this change when we have flaps in our aircraft? So stall, flaps, and again, I'll do this at sea level. Again, our stall is going to be wing loading, so I'll just copy this over to save myself some time. I'm going to copy this equation over to save myself some time. We've already plugged it in, so we'll reduce the chance of me making a mistake. Now our CL max. Um, I have two options for flaps. I can choose. I have flaps for takeoff and flaps for landing. I'm going to look at the extreme for landing um, with full flap deflection. You know, we don't actually know what that is, but uh, we can see if we had a maximum lift coefficient of 1.6 with flaps fully deflected, what would our stall speed now be? Um, or sorry, what would our wing loading need to be in order to have our stall speed of, of 90? So I set that to 1.6. And I have to go up and correct all the other values they've shifted. Uh, and there we go. So if I plug this in there, we have a wing loading of 43. So I can have a wing loading up to 43 now and maintain a stall speed of 90 knots because I can generate more lift. So each square foot of wing is able to carry more weight before the aircraft stalls. So I have a less stringent requirement now. And what I could do is have a different stall speed requirement for my flap deflection. So maybe I want in the takeoff configuration, I want to have a slower approach. So I'm going to specify a takeoff speed or a stall speed uh, with flaps over here. I want that to be lower. Maybe I want that to be 60 knots. So if that's the case, then I'm going to change my stall speed in this equation from our clean wing stall speed to our uh, landing or flaps condition stall speed. So we'll see it's a little more constringent or stringent now. So now I have a wing loading of 19. So this now becomes the more stringent requirement. This is going to drive my maximum wing loading versus our clean wing. Now, what if we could generate, you know, more lift? We add more flap, we design our wing to generate more lift, have a higher max lift coefficient. Uh, so for this to be approximately equal to our stall criteria of 90 knots for a clean wing, if we want to achieve 60 knots for a uh, wing with flaps. Uh, we need a lift coefficient of about 2.2, maybe even 2.3, 2.25 to get approximately you know, the same value. Um, so if we had a lift coefficient of 2.25 with our flap configuration, we can sort of reverse analysis uh, on this and look and say that uh, the stall speed that we could achieve is 60. It's just another way we can look at our analysis. So let's just leave this for now so we can see the lines distinctly. I'm just going to put this as 2.0. So we'll plot this point. We'll add that. I'm going to add a series. It's going to be called stall flaps. My x coordinates, again, I'm just going to pick two points. My y coordinates, 0 and 1. So we can see that line now show up. Now the scale in Excel is just wonderful how it does this for you. It assumes we don't care what's below 24, we do. So I'm gonna fix this now so that I don't get upset. And I'm gonna make this zero. I'm gonna fix that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna allow the maximum to change so that I capture everything. And then our thrust to weight ratio, we really don't need to plot all the way to one. So I'm gonna look at this axis as well. And go over to the settings, axis options. My minimum, I want to stay is zero. So I want to fix that. Uh, but I want to change my maximum. Um, probably 0 0.6 would be sufficient to capture everything we're looking for. Um, and I want to fix this at zero too, so it doesn't change it on me. All right, so we fixed our uh, axes. We have two plots. We have stall for clean configuration and stall for flaps. Next video, we'll look at our takeoff run um, and plot those as well.